Hello everyone, I'm Deborah Clementozzi and for me it's a very big pleasure staying here with you to share a new life perspective which make our wishes come true although the difficulties. Today I want to talk to you about a device that is without a doubt capable of uniting in enchantment and admiration, art in all its forms. Specifically, I'd like to share with you some thoughts about one of the greatest masterpieces of Italian pictorial art, the deposition by Caravaggio. I, however, am not here to give you a reading of the work or a description of it, not to tell you that it was painted between 1602 and 1604 or that it is kept in the Vatican Art Gallery. I will not tell you that it consists in six characters that reflect the realism and the use of perspective that revolutionized Italian painting. On the contrary, I would like you to concentrate on what, in my opinion, makes every artistic work unique, on what defines the very essence of the artist, on what most, unfortunately, cannot grasp. Detail. Caravaggio is peculiar about detail because it is what builds and gives meaning to each of his works. It is the one to convey the message that it intends to send every time. Look carefully at Jesus' arm. His body is lifeless, yet his veins are still visible. This apparent contradiction contains the meaning of the role of Christ, that is, to redeem humanity from sin and death through his blood, which he voluntarily gives to all human beings. Now, look at his finger touching the anointing stone, the corner of which comes out of the canvas to reflect the psalm, according to which the stone rejected by the builder is become the head of the corner. In the lower left, under the stone, you will notice the luxurian leaf of a small plant, the barbasso or mullein badger, used to make the wicks of the candles. But what not everyone knows is that this shrub represents Christ's resurrection. Its vitality contrasts with the dry plant that is found at the bottom right, representing death. The sacrifice of Jesus was weighed is supported by Nicodemus, whose folded shoulders and back are visible, it is the key to freeing all us from sin and death before he is resurrected. Why did I want to share these details with you, so small as not to be coached without a careful consideration? The reason is that the details allow the full understanding of a message, of whatever nature it is. The details make us change the perspective what will determine our decision and consequently our actions. Apparently, the main colors convey an idea of completeness, of wholeness, but in my opinion, this is not the case. Their real strength their significance lies in the fact that, well combined and combined, they create colors and shades that make each painting unique and unrepeatable. The colors are always the same, but the shades are innumerable. In the same way, life is also always a space of time, but the episodes with which it is studied make it extraordinary and worth living. Changing the perspective of the circumstances that arise, in fact, gives us the uniqueness and the dignity of the privilege of living, a privilege that unfortunately we often do not grasp. This is what happened to me. Art, in fact, is the metaphor of the life that I voluntarily decided to lead a life made of actions moved by a detail that broadened my gaze, preventing it from stopping at the surface. After classical-like school, 
I studied at the Faculty of Classical Literature, not without difficulty, but with full gratification. In fact, after passing every exam, I felt the enveloping and exciting feeling of doing what I was born for. All these goals, as I reached them, even if I didn't know whether I would succeed, painted the picture of my life day after day, but only with the basic colors. For me, the nuances and details began to take shape in 2010, when in one of the most prestigious museums in Rome, I met my mentor, a fantastic woman who noticed my smile among 50 people who were present and allowed me to know what I never hoped for, but always wanted, art and all its hidden meanings. With her teachings, in fact, I began to see the work of art with a different look. With her, I resumed my journey towards the person I wanted to be, the one who, for too long, the pain had taken away from me. From her, I learned to look at every detail expressed by the artist and with the help of uh, other senses. From time to time, I was able to touch the fabrics portrayed in the work, feel the smells or listen to the music that the context suggested. These sensation often bring me back to the memory of the numerous times in which, as a child, playing with dolls, I would lose a tiny shoe and I would ask my mother to help me look for it. But her answer was always the same. Find it yourself. Use what you have. I did not understand, but I cried asking her for help again. My mother was adamant. The result was that, finally, one day, I found the shoe and showed it to her happily. Once I grew up, I asked her why she had been so mean and she confided that treating me that way was very sad for her, but it was necessary for my autonomy, for my resolve and responsibility. Even now, I wonder how my mother managed to understand before me my attitudes, my inclinations and my will. Strengthened by your support, I found the courage to indulge my passions, including unusual or discouraged ones. Aware of her trust and her foresight, I followed the choices dictated by my heart and by love for life and knowledge, and this was decisive to satisfy my curiosity to try every experience, to know every emotion from the strongest to the one common to all. There have been many things that I have been able to achieve thanks to this curiosity, such as, for example, the canvases painted by me with the nuances that I myself created, guided by the skilled hand of my teacher or my paintings on fabric. In recent years, I have learned a fundamental truth. We are the only people who can set our limits and we are the ones to define the roads that we refuse to accept as impossible. As when you choose to change the course of your events, I began to be surrounded by people who, like me, have the mission of challenging the limit where it is impossible. Each of them helped to get me out of my comfort zone and change my perspective again once again through a detail. All these people did not accept the idea of giving up. All of them have moved out of their comfort zone and it is in so doing, not standing still, that they have made the true discoveries. 
One of these discoveries is a technology developed by those who believe that details can make every experience live, even for individuals who were previously buried from it. The genius and enlightenment of these people allows the enjoyment of art independently, even to those who, as their main resource, have only the sense of touch and hearing, but who have until now believed that the beauty of art was not accessible to them. As for me, I have a particular characteristic for which I am technically defined blind. As a blind person, thanks to the possibility of working with these tools and observing the joy of those who, in total independence, can be surprised and admire a work of art, I know, understand that the artist in expressing every detail wanted to convey his emotions and his message not only to a particular category of people but to everyone. In fact, everyone had to appreciate and admire his works without prohibitions and impositions. Caravaggio, painting the deposition, chose to eternalize an emotion by following what his genius suggested to him, representing the characters in their own pain and poverty. His work is still appreciated and remembered in spite of those who, at the time, had despised and judged it. Like Caravaggio, I also voluntarily decide to ignore those who have always said to me, you can't do this. I have always responded to this ban by doing exactly what others told me not to do. Only this way was I able to see things that others do not see, feel emotions that others do not feel because they are too dazzled by the superficiality of uh, elements that uh, are easy to grasp. What I have learned and would like to share with you is uh, that uh, curiosity, love for detail and the strength to be able to grasp the sense of this detail have allowed me to see art. But in reality, today, for me, these three things are much more. They are, in fact, the constants of the formula with which today I finally learned to see much more, to see life. In this speech, I've mentioned people who did not accept the idea of giving up. Among these people, there is Fabio Dagnano, who I met in uh, 2015. And with him, I've lived uh, many events, uh, many emotions, uh, thanks to his technology called Tuteco, which is a device uh, which uh, uses my main senses, touch and hearing, to permit to me to have uh, my own perception of an artwork. I, I'm so happy to talk to you about my story and about Tuteco because uh, Tuteco is one of the key which uh, have changed my life because uh, I've learned that uh, the beauty of art isn't forbidden to me anymore. And so I hope that this technology will go all over the world, all around many and many museums. Thank you.
Devo condividere con voi un'ultima cosa per cui ringrazio sentitamente tutti coloro che si sono impegnati perché questo è uno degli strumenti, in questo caso è lo strumento che mi ha permesso di raccontarvi la deposizione di Caravaggio e di farvela vedere come la vedete voi ma attraverso i miei occhi. Grazie a tutti.